Hey everyone, this is Jason Long with JH Media Group, and today we're doing our seventh installment of what goes into a SaaS platform. And today we're going to be talking about probably one of the most under contemplated pieces of the entire system. This is the thing that so many people come to me and they're like, oh, I've planned out the whole thing and I'm take a look and I'm like, what about this? It's a huge part. It's a huge, huge part. Have you guessed it yet? It's the admin panel. I bet you were thinking of one other as well. There's another one I'm going to do upcoming really soon that's also very similar. Uh, similarly forgotten. So the admin panel. Everybody forgets about the admin panel. I don't know why, but they do. Or at least clients do. Developers don't, but clients do. So the admin panel covers a few different pieces. It goes over, it manages, it, you use it to manage user management, promo codes, affiliates, um, maintenance, data management, data entry, communications with users, and system stats. So there, by the way, there's a million different kinds of, um, of SaaS systems. Yours may have other things other than that. That's why I kind of, I had this group of just like data management because whatever your thing does, you're gonna have to manage that thing in there somewhere. But all the rest of the stuff, you're gonna have to manage for almost any uh, SaaS. So this is general stuff. It's not everything, everything in the world. Let's talk about user management to start. So you're gonna to need to be able to manage who's in your system, block them, ban them, add new people, do, you, uh, do what's called user impersonation, reset their passwords. Let's talk about user impersonation. User impersonation is when you click and you log in as that user so that you as the admin can log in and see what they're doing. So. That's, that's actually one of the most helpful things from, a, uh, from an admin perspective uh, in the entire system. Being able just to click, log in, go, yep, I see the problem you're having. It's definitely a problem. We'll take a look at it. So all of the user management stuff, don't forget about that stuff, especially the user impersonation is super, super helpful. Okay, next, promo codes. I think I talked about this in the, uh, one of my previous videos. But doing promo codes can be done through something like Stripe or Braintree or other payment processors, but they're not going to do every single different kind of promo code you want to do. If, if for whatever the primary value metric is, they'll do the promo codes on that. Like I want to have 20% off of the system for lifetime. Cool. It'll handle that. No problem. But if you're, if you've got something that has like two or three different value metrics all meshed together, like the number of users and like the number of projects or the number of whatever, and you try to do a promo code that's like more of this and less of that for this much money, some percentage here, there and whatever, you're going to have to build a custom system for that. And that's where, that's where this custom system goes is in this admin panel. Next up, affiliate management. Now you can use something like first promoter to do your affiliates. That's another SaaS system specifically for affiliate management. It's really helpful, but when at a certain point, you might as well just build your own. And in a lot of ways, you're going to need to build your own at a certain size. If you rely on affiliate management or affiliate partnerships to grow your system. So you're going to manage those affiliates and those affiliate links and those affiliate attributions within the, the admin panel. So, uh, it's definitely something to consider as you get started building the system and as you're growing the system. Next, just general maintenance, general system maintenance, um, data maintenance, being able to shut the system, put the system down and say we're in maintenance mode so that your developers can go in and run maintenance on the system. That's generally done from the admin panel. Another piece that's kind of sometimes kind of yes, kind of no done from that admin panel having to do with maintenance is the statuses of different things. Personally, I like to see all the statuses when I log into my admin panel, but it's also helpful to have a separate status server running this checking everything. So that if your main server goes down, you can still see that it's all down or you can still see pieces, you know, what pieces are down, what pieces are up if you can't actually log into your uh, admin panel. But, you know, it, 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 sometimes it's nice to have it in the admin panel as well. Uh, all right, next, uh, data management. I talked about that a minute ago. Whatever it is your thing does, managing that data. It might be, 
I don't know, a million different things. Like you might be managing teams, you might be managing projects, you might be managing money, you might be managing health records, you might be managing a million different things. So whatever it is that your your system is managing, that's the data management part of it. So that you can your admins can go in, change things around, move things around, add information, delete information, test the use of things, and generally just help your users make sure everything is done uh, properly and their areas are maintained. Um, data entry. So there's a difference between data management and data entry. If you've got a system, or especially if you have a system where you're constantly adding data or you have a team of people constantly adding data. So a buddy of mine runs a SaaS system that sells data where he has a call center of people calling all across the US all the time. They add the data into this, this management portal which then gets, you know, it goes, it goes through a process of steps of, of checking that data and all of that, but it's all built into that admin portal. So for the most part, most of the time, data entry, I guess, especially if you're starting, should be done there. There's a lot of different ways to do data entry, but that's how I've done it in the past. Okay, next, communications with customers. So you might use something like a pop-up manager within your site where you just throw up a pop-up whenever you want. That's really helpful. It's a third-party system, but if you've got messages coming to and from, or in and out of your system from people to one another or from everybody to you or from you to everybody, you're gonna need a centralized place to manage all of those communications. And it's really important you have a nice, robust system if, you, if your system is primarily a communication system. Don't underestimate how much time it's gonna to take to develop that system for communicating with lots and lots of people, especially if you, if you have to communicate with groups of people or if you, if you have to communicate with everybody at once, and then they're all gonna communicate back with you all at once. So for example, if you've got like 20,000 users and you send out a message and you're asking them for stuff and if 20,000 people respond to you, how do you manage that? That kind of stuff can get complicated. And a lot of times other third party systems are brought in to help with that, but something to consider. And then my finally, final piece on the, on the general stuff is the system stats. Personally, I like to have system statistics. I like to know how many users got to this point in my system, how many users got to that point in my system, how many people took this action, made this purchase, got this email, and now we're doing this thing over here. Those kinds of system stats that help you understand how your users are using the system that you could integrate into other systems but are built right into that management area where you're already looking anyway can be really helpful. Now, like I was saying, they can be built into other systems and sometimes that's the way to go on it, that you do all of that management stuff from those other systems. But I like to have them in the admin area. So once again, there's other pieces of other systems that have that people put into their admin areas, but these are the general things you're generally gonna manage from that admin area. Keep in mind, there's lots of other things like money, emails, transactional emails, other things that you might manage from other systems that you could also pull in there. But this is a good, good place to start. So that's it. Look forward to our next uh, installment in the series and I'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Hey everyone, please be sure to click the subscribe button down at the bottom so that I can keep sending you all these great videos on SaaS. I hope you're enjoying it. I'll talk to you soon.